Greetings this Tuesday morning. We gather for our second day in this um, series um, called Unbinding the Gospel by Martha Grace Reese. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. I'm delighted to pray with you this morning. Our focus today is on uh, the Gospel of Matthew's chapter 4. Um, beginning at the 17th verse. So let us begin our prayer. We give you thanks, O God. We give you thanks, calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. O God, let our mouths proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Today we begin with Canticle F, Song of Lamentation. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see if there's any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, inflicted by God's fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comfort is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, wormwood and gall. The steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in God. It is good that we should wait quietly for the coming of God's salvation. As forementioned, our scripture today is from Matthew, chapter 4, beginning at the 17th verse through the 22nd. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Our reflection today again reminds us of this steadfast love of God that accompanies us throughout our life. And yet in this calling of Jesus to his, his disciples, his apostles, um, it involved them having to let something go, to leave something. I don't know about you, but if you're like me, it's very hard to do that. It seems like well, I want to hold on to everything. <laughs> I, I can do this. I can, uh, I can have a relationship with God and at the same time enjoy some of these other things that might distract me from that relationship. So I'm sort of living in a, in a blended relationship, so to speak. <laughs> I try to want it all. Um, I've always been like that. I can remember my mother trying to put me down for a nap and it was like, didn't want to nap because I thought I was going to miss something, so I had to stay awake. <laughs> uh, that probably is just a number of quirks I have. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure we all have them. Um, but it's that experience of, you know, what is it in our life is the challenge today to think about. Is what is it in our life that we're willing to let go of? What distraction? What is there that's really not... Um, necessary for our survival, for our life, for our for an enjoyment of God's blessings um, that we hold on to, that we're holding on to stuff that's just not necessary. Um, and it could mean a grudge. It could be something that we've, you know, some hurt, some pain, something that we've held on to that we just don't want to let go of for fear of 
failure or fear of something. Or perhaps it's, you know, particular pleasure we have in our life that's just, again, not really serving us, but we don't necessarily want to let it go either. So we hold on to these distractions, these things that keep us from really entering deeper into a relationship with God. And sometimes we we kind of have this idea that, you know, we're sacrificing and it becomes a real negative ordeal to detach ourselves or to let something go. But the purpose of letting go is not to sacrifice or to make ourselves miserable or painful, or but to free us, to liberate us, to give us an opportunity to grow in this and understand and appreciate the blessings that God is providing us. To see in all that we have, our sufferings as well as our pleasures, that God is present to it all. If we make room, if we take on um, that priority of putting God as center point in our life. It's a big hill for many of us. <laughs> um, but we're invited to think about that today, to think about what are those things that we can let go of, what are those things that stand in the way. What would we leave behind So we pray, O oh Lord, what might I leave behind today to follow you more dearly? Help us to see in ourselves with better focus over these next days to understand your love with, with deeper gratitude and appreciation. And to understand that depth of love that we can so easily share with others. So we pray for those in our communities who are in need of God's love. For those who spend their lives mostly distracted and not connecting. For those who hear God's word but don't really take it to, to, to truth in their hearts that we can help to be a freeing agent to open doors that need opening and, and bringing uh, light into the darkness. Give us grace this day that all of our distractions, that anything that stands in the way and obstacles that stand in the way of our appreciation of your love, that we might let those go. May God bless us today and always fill us with his grace. Take this time of prayer to truly spend time, spend quality time with God, letting that voice, that, that spirit of God to fill us, enrich our lives, and free us. Free us so that we can be open to others. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a blessed day.